in the midst of a situation where multiple issues are threatening millions of lives in the UK and around the world, and urgent, desperate action is required, Boris Johnson and his government have decided instead to focus on requiring photographic ID for voters in England, Scotland and Wales. And I apologise to Northern Ireland, I had no idea that you already had photo ID laws in place and I should have been spitting feathers about these since the very second that I found out about them. These laws will solve nothing. In the 2019 general election, 47 million Britons voted and there were a grand total of four convictions for fraudulent voting, which is less than one in 10 million votes. Not enough to change any outcomes, not enough to be the kind of problem we should be worrying about. In fact, quite the opposite. What this legislation will do, the, mini, the, the second that it's brought in, is take the human right to a democratic vote away from two million people in Britain. Approximately a million voters who don't have a passport, a driving license or another form of photographic ID, and another million who do, but it doesn't resemble them closely enough to be usable as photographic ID. And those people, if they want to regain their basic human right to a vote, will have to jump through financial administrative hoops. And in some cases, it won't even be possible. First of all, getting many of those ID forms costs money and the government have said that there'll be a free way to do it that'll be sorted out by local authorities and they haven't specified how and they haven't specified how they're going to cover the cost of it. They've just like thrown that out there as if it somehow solves the problem. But it doesn't anyway, even if it does get done in a way that's sensible by your local authority. It doesn't solve the problem because to do that kind of admin and to fill the paperwork out and to collect the documents that you need in order to fill that paperwork out takes time. And many people are time poor as well as financially poor and they may not be able to get a babysitter or someone to cover for them at work. They may not be able to get out and about without assistance. They may not be able to get access to these documents without somebody to help them filling in these forms, doing this kind of thing. So we're taking their votes away. We're also taking votes away from anyone who has left an abusive situation and not had time to grab their paperwork. From anyone who's living on the streets and has been robbed repeatedly and has had things like their birth certificate go missing. From anyone who is in an abusive situation and the person who's abusing them has quite deliberately taken their paperwork away. And let's not forget, you know, just as another random example that pops into my head, you know, a whole generation of people who came over to the UK with the Windrush and were then told that they couldn't get a passport because where was the proof that they'd been in the UK all this time? And it turned out that the answer was that the proof had been deliberately burnt by the government. They literally set fire to the proof of people's identity and people's right to be in the UK and therefore their right to vote in the UK. And now they're going, well, if you can't prove it, so unbelievably ridiculous. And there are also those people who don't look like their photo ID, so perhaps they've been terribly ill and their appearance has changed. Perhaps they've had to change their appearance because of something that's going on in their lives, like escaping from somebody who is abusive. And perhaps they've chosen to change their appearance by having cosmetic surgery. And one of the reasons for doing that might be because they are changing their gender. And in fact, they may not want to go in to a polling station and hand over a photo of someone they really, really don't look like and then be assessed and scrutinised by someone who works in a polling station that they don't know. All of this stuff is just going to take votes away from people and voting is a basic human right. It also opens the door for all kinds of other electoral fraud. So, I mean, I know at least 50 people who could vote with my driving licence. I mean, honestly, it's a tiny little black and white granulated picture. It's, um, if I left this lying around, all of you know someone who's like a white chick with brown hair who could go in and vote with this. And honestly, if it was a white chick with blonde hair, she could just say, I dyed my hair. It doesn't stop fraud at all. In fact, it's much easier for me to go in and throw this at the polling station than it is to go in and quote my full name and full address verbatim from memory and have it referenced against the piece of paper in front of someone. 
So elective fraud becomes easier, and there's another way in which it becomes easier. If I really wanted to commit electoral fraud, what I'd do is I'd get a job in a polling station and when somebody came in who looked like they didn't vote for the party I wanted them to vote for, I'd go, oh, no, sorry, it doesn't look like you, can't take that. And that would be a much more effective way of causing much larger scale electoral fraud. So here we are in this ridiculous situation where for absolutely no reason Boris Johnson is going to require us to prove who we are in order to exercise our own basic human rights. And in the meantime, he won't say who paid for his wallpaper, who paid for his holiday in Mustique, or who his children are. The fact is, this is a distraction. This is another battle we've got to go and fight. And he wants that because he wants us to have no energy left for fighting all the other ridiculous, awful things that he's trying to throw at us. And I'm sorry that we have to go and fight this as well as fighting everything else. And I'll see you next week.